Hello everybody and welcome to Cool Season Vegetables. This is a free gardening clinic that was conducted at Shades of Green on September 19th. And uh, this is going to be the slideshow presentation or the video version of that. Uh, something we've never done at Shades of Green, but we will give it a shot. Uh, of course, Shades of Green is Garden Center, family owned and operated in Frisco, Texas. We've been on the same piece of property for about 22 years. If you've never come and seen us, well, we'd sure like you to. Things are looking really nice around the nursery this time of year. Uh, in this class or clinic, we're going to talk about uh, cool season vegetable gardening. We'll discuss what to plant, when to plant, where to plant, raised beds and containers, soil preparation, and frost protection. And then we'll end up uh, with a little bit of uh, commentary or discussion about pest and disease control. Now, a little bit about myself. My name is Tim Wardell. I am the marketing coordinator at Shades of Green Incorporated. I'm also a Texas certified nursery professional and a certified square foot gardening instructor. That's the uh, type of gardening that I like to do. You're basically planting in squares instead of rows. If that is something you would like to learn more about, I highly recommend these two books, the all new Square Foot Gardening third edition uh, by the, uh, put out by the Square Foot Gardening Foundation. And there's a companion book that I also really like called Growing Perfect Vegetables. And uh, basically you open it up and you've got a two page spread for almost every vegetable you can think about. It tells you how to plant it, when to plant it, how to care for it, how to harvest it. A really good resource. And you can find these through the Square Foot Gardening Foundation at squarefootgardening.org. And I believe they're also available on Amazon. Uh, two great books, highly recommend it, great organization, and uh, I do think it's a really simple way to garden, especially if you're doing it in your backyard. Also want to point out that our discussion today is going to be relevant to Collin County, Texas, which is uh, north of Dallas, if you're watching this from some other part of the country. That's USDA Zone 8A. That means our average low temperature in the winter is somewhere around 10 or 15 degrees. <clears throat> and uh, that's going to include Frisco, McKinney, Plano, Prosper, Salina, Allen, and a lot of other cities and towns. It's a very bustling area. So all the information we're going to discuss here in this uh, talk will be related directly to what's happening in our soil and our climate here in Collin County. So let's get going with our syllabus here with uh, what to plant. Uh, a lot of your cool season crops in our area, you're going to have a lot of root, uh, root crops. That'd be turnip, radish, beets, carrots, onions, garlic, kohlrabi, uh, etc. Then you've got a lot of leafy greens, mustard, spinach, cabbage, kale, leaf lettuce, broccolis, cauliflowers, uh, Brussels sprouts. And this is not a complete list, but these are just a lot of the, the most common vegetables that you'll see uh, being planted in our area here in the early fall. Uh, and uh, what's great about most of these crops, uh, they are frost tolerant crops, meaning that they will withstand temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, I know last year, because the winter we had wasn't that severe, uh, I was still harvesting plenty of broccoli and Swiss chard well into January and February. And you can't do that up north where it snows multiple feet at a time. Not really something we have to worry about. <clears throat> a good resource uh, as far as what to plant is the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. They have uh, just agrilifeextension.tamu.edu. Uh, don't worry about that long, long link there at the top of the screen. I will put that in the uh, information below this video so you can click on that directly. But they've got a fall vegetable gardening guide, which I really like. It's very helpful. And on that website, you will find this list, which will list a whole bunch of cool season vegetables that you can put in the ground and then you breaks the state up by five different regions and you will just find the vegetable and then go over and go to the appropriate region and that'll kind of give you a ballpark of when you need to get that plant in the ground. And Collin County, we are region three. So that's the third column here and you can see it on their little map that includes the area north of Dallas, which is Collin County and uh, starts with beans, goes down to mustard and then the bottom half of the list is here and ends on tournament and you see that there's a lot of uh, September and October dates on that list. And again, you'll find this on this website. I'll put the link below. 
As far as when to plant, well, now. <laughs> Fall cool season crops are planted mid-September into October. You want to get them in the ground. And usually uh, when you plant something, it's very dependent on the first or last frost date, depending on is it a warm season crop, is it a cool season crop. Here in Collin County, uh, our first frost tends to be around mid-November, November 15th. Some charts will say November 17th. Bottom line, the middle of November. Our last frost date will be mid-March. And if you look at a packet of seeds or if you read a book on gardening, it'll say, you know, uh, sow by seed outdoors eight weeks before first frost. Or six weeks or something like that. Or, or plant, safe to plant two weeks after last frost. So in the spring, a lot of your warm weather crops, uh, like your tomatoes or peppers, they'll want to go in in April, which if you do the math, is about two weeks after our traditional last frost of March 15th. And conversely, right now, this time of year, a lot of your cool season crops you want to get in the ground six to eight weeks before that first frost, which is November 15th, which puts us, you know, mid-September. So... There's another great list that I found. This is a chart that came from the fine folks at the Collin County Master Gardeners Association. I don't know if this chart is still on their website. I'll put a link to it below and you can find it. Now this is not just cool season crops. These are a whole bunch of crops, cool season, warm season. And again, it's not even an exhaustive list either. It's not listing every conceivable vegetable that you could plant, but it's got a lot of them. And you see these ranges here in the maroon, and that range it gives you a large window of when that plant could be in the ground. Uh, charts like this and all these different tables of what do I plant when can be a bit confusing. I have been gardening in North Texas for 40 years, and I have learned that it's real simple if you just remember three dates. And for our cool season crops, it's Labor Day. Uh, if you just realize that after that first Monday in September, that's when you need to start getting that fall garden ready. And if you see this blue line intersects a lot of this maroon here on the right side, and then if you go over and find the names of those vegetables, those were the same ones that were on that previous list. You've got your broccolis and your cabbages and um, uh, things like that, spinach is on there, and um, turnips. So get all those cool season crops in the ground right now. And then you're going to follow that up in late winter or early, early spring. If you think Valentine's Day, well, that's typically by Valentine's Day. That's when you want your onions and your potatoes to be in the ground. You could also plant more spinach or, or chard or kale at that time of year. And again, you see how the yellow line intersects all these little maroon bands there on the left side of the list. And then we'll follow that with a third planting, if you want to plant year round, which you can do here in Collin County. After April Fool's Day, I get that it's not really a holiday, but it's a good way to remember. Again, that's about two weeks after our last traditional frost, or traditionally what's our last frost. And then you see here that that green line is intersecting all these warm weather crops. You've got your melons, your cucumbers, your eggplants, your corn, your peppers, and your tomatoes. So if you remember those three dates, Labor Day, Valentine's Day, and April Fool's Day, that's when you plant your three seasons of crops here in Collin County uh, in North Texas. Now, as far as where to plant, plant in full sun. Nearly all vegetable crops need a minimum of eight hours of direct sunlight for best yields. Uh, if your garden is in full shade, just don't expect much success, and that's just the, the simple truth of it. There are crops that are a little more shade tolerant than others, but by and large, if you don't have eight hours of sunlight, you're not going to have as much success as you would like. You might also run into some other problems with uh, disease and pests or other things. It's, it's just harder to do if you're in a shady spot. Now, a little bit about raised beds and containers. Our heavy black clay soil is alkaline it's thick uh, there's a reason they call it black gumbo it's not fun to work it's not for the faint of heart i know i started doing it with my father when i was 10. it's not pleasant having a raised bed or a container or a flower pot will allow you to control the quality and the health of the soil uh, better prevent weeds and have adequate drainage. And those are all things that will improve your success. So my advice is to never plant in our soil, plant above it. 
plant on top of it. Uh, these, if you want to make a, a, a four foot by eight foot uh, wooden box like they've got in the photo here, uh, those planters, well, great. Those roots are now going in, they're planted in that nice healthy soil, and then they're going to go through that and then into the, to the dirt beneath it. And um, by the time they reach that heavy black clay, they've got, they're off to a good start because you have control of the soil and what you plant them in is probably loose and sandy and it's got some some a little bit of acidity to it. Most vegetables like a little bit slightly acidic soil and our, our soil here in Collin County is heavy clay alkaline soil. Um, so you were, these roots in these boxes here, if that was here in uh, Frisco, those roots would still be going down into our black clay, but they're surrounded by a lot of other really good soil as well. It, it makes a world of difference. You do not have to be a carpenter. You do not have to build a raised bed out of wood or stone or anything. Anything that will hold soil will work. You can use plastic buckets, uh, Tupperware, uh, bins, storage bins, flower pots, anything that will hold soil will allow you to have a garden. Uh, flower pots are excellent if you have just a small amount of space. Uh, again, just put your soil in it, put your plants in it, uh, imagine that this little half uh, rain bar uh, whiskey barrel was filled with a salad mix. You could have salad, uh, lettuce, arugula, Swiss chard, kale, uh, maybe even some chives, all growing in one pot, all mixed in together at the same time, and there's your salad. You just go harvest a little bit from that and you're all set. So you don't have to have row after row of, of formally designed, perfectly straight wooden raised beds. Don't worry about that. Flower pots, five gallon buckets work fantastic. For soil prep, now if you have an existing raised bed that you've grown vegetables in before, then you probably don't need to do anything except amend with a fresh bag or two of compost, maybe some organic fertilizer. So if you have existing beds, just fertilizer, compost, and you know, that's the, the three C's of a vegetable gardening, compost, compost, and compost. Uh, but if you're just starting with a brand new bed or a brand new bucket or a brand new flower pot, uh, you might want to consider one of these following uh, soil mixes. Uh, Texas Pure makes a great planting mix. It's a locally based company. And uh, their product, uh, if you buy it in the bags, comes in a one cubic foot bag. Uh, it's essentially a mix of soil and compost and it's uh, mostly herbaceous materials. It is organic and ORMI certified if that's uh, of a concern to you. Really good product. I've uh, filled entire beds with it before. I've planted in it and have really good results. You can also get a product called Raised Bed Mix. Uh, this is um, a really good combination of compost. Um, it's got some shale in it for drainage. Worm castings are an amazing thing to have in your soil uh, if you don't have uh, worms in it already, which you usually don't if you're just starting out. Uh, got some great mineral content and a little diatomaceous earth. Good blend. A little on the pricey side if you're going to fill a large bed, but if you've got some smaller areas, a uh, really good product. There's also Nature's Creation Organic Potting Soil. Again, if you're really concerned about being organic, just know that you're going to pay more for that kind of thing. A very good combination of, of, of uh, uh, ingredients in this blend. Uh, I would really uh, be keen on using something like this if I was growing in a flower pot. This or the raised bed mix would be excellent choices for that. <clears throat> or if I was just trying to augment an existing bed with a little something extra, you could go with this. This is nature's creation. And then of course, there's just plain old topsoil. The Solamender product uh, does have some uh, compost in it, so it's, it's not just dirt. You're not buying a bag of dirt. There are some, some nutrients in it. And uh, I would use this to amend an existing bed possibly. I don't know that I would grow directly into this by itself without adding a little more oomph to it uh, from a nutritional standpoint, but uh, still a good product. Uh, I, I like it. It's, it's a little on the sandy side, and I don't mean that in a bad way because our heavy clay could use uh, some um, loosening up. If I was had a lot of heavy clay or my beds weren't that deep, I would, uh, I would till up the, the clay and amend it with the uh, topsoil. That would make a big difference. Kickstarters. Uh, for a brand new vegetable garden, you may want to kickstart the beneficial microbial activity with one of the following. 
Uh, I really like Biotone Starter Plus. Uh, this is from Espoma, which is one of the oldest makers of organic fertilizers in the United States. It's a granular, slow release. Uh, it's organic. A 433, which means it's a low dose, which I always like to, to use on my vegetables. And the uh, Starter Plus, it's the mycorrhizae bacteria, which will really help uh, increase the root mass. And it's great if you're going to have transplants. So you're not planting from seeds, you're planting from little, little plants in the four inch pots that you get at a great nursery like Shades of Green. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, the um, the uh, the formulation of the Starter Plus will really uh, help kickstart uh, a brand new garden. I like to use this. I pulled out all my, my, my warm season stuff, my, one of my tomatoes and peppers and leg plants, all that warm weather stuff was done for the season. Um, and I'm prepping the bed for the next season. I would uh, use some Biotone uh, to, to really get that going. Another product, this is developed by the fine folks who work in the cannabis industry across the country. Uh, this is called Recharge, probably the most expensive product that I'm going to discuss today. But you only need to mix half a teaspoon with a gallon of water. That's half a teaspoon. So a, a one pound bag could last you for years and years and years, unless you're doing something illegal in your basement. Um, good product. It is just millions of beneficial bacteria. And so when you mix this, you want to mix it in rainwater. If you put your half teaspoon in your watering pitcher and then fill it up with the water from the tap, you've just defeated the whole point. Because city water, tap water, is treated with all kinds of things, chlor uh, chlorine, uh, fluorides, different things like that. They put that in the water supply to kill bacteria. And this is basically a bag of bacteria that I don't want killed. So when you mix this with water, use rainwater uh, if you can, uh, water from a lake, water from a creek, anything but water from a tap. Uh, it will just uh, allow more of the bacteria to live and then get into your soil. And then there's also worm castings, which I think is one of the most perfect things, wonderful things you could ever put on your garden. Uh, my theory is that uh, you know you've got good soil if you can uh, dig a small hole and find earthworms immediately. If your soil has no earthworms at all, you've really got a problem. Worm castings are a great source of organic uh, matter. It, uh, it increases moisture retention. It adds a whole lot of beneficial microbial activity. It improves the soil structure. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to have. If you've got worms in your uh, vegetable garden beds already, fantastic. You've got free worm castings. If you don't, because you're just starting out with a brand new bed, you can buy them in a bag and you can add them to your soil that way. You can soak these in water and make a, uh, it's called compost tea or worm tea that you can pour onto your plants, onto their roots. It's just wonderful, yummy goodness and your plants will absolutely love it. Uh, for fertilizers, I always prefer an organic fertilizer because they release slowly over time and won't burn your plants if used correctly. And I recommend Espoma products. I really like the Biotone Starter Plus, which I've already recommended. I use that to get a garden started, but then once things are in production, once I have vegetables actively bearing fruit, uh, then I would typically switch the Garden Tone. Uh, again, both excellent products. Uh, both work really, really well and uh, never really had any issue with those. You can also give your plants vitamins. Super Thrive is, uh, I don't know any serious gardener that does not have a bottle of this in their garage. It's a liquid, you mix one teaspoon, which is usually one cap full per gallon of water. Uh, and it's basically just multivitamins for your plants. And I use it for transplants, I use it on my house plants, I use it on almost everything. It's just wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, really like Super Thrive. These smaller bottles have become really hard to find, thank you COVID, uh, because supplies have run out uh, across the country, certainly here in the Metroplex area. Uh, the smaller bottles are harder to find, which was the certainly the more affordable one. Uh, a small bottle like this would keep me going for about two years, maybe three. Uh, you can only find the bigger bottles currently, and they are not uh, that, they're not cheap but uh, they'll last you a long, long time and you can use it on everything. Now, we're gonna plant in the fall. 
So we need to talk about frost protection because as you know, um, again, our traditional first frost is November 15th and our last frost is March 15th. But if you've lived in the Collin County, North Texas area for any length of time, you know that we do have frost well before November 15th. And we nearly, <laughs> seems like a regular basis, have a cold snap right around Easter, which is a couple of weeks after that March 15th date. Uh, so um, we never know when a frost is gonna happen. And the best way to handle a frost is, um, you know, when we get really cold weather, you wanna cover your plants. And frost cloth is the easiest and best choice. The fabric is breathable, it'll let air in, but also retain heat. It kinda of acts, you can think of it kinda of like a hot air balloon. It's gonna trap the heat that's coming off of that uh, raised bed. You put it out there, let the sun warm it up, and then it'll make it through the night. Um, what do I call really cold weather? Well, according to most North Texans, that's any time it gets below 28 degrees. Uh, and that's typically my tipping point for when do I want to go protect my broccoli and my kale and my Swiss chard, or am I okay? 32, not worried. 30, I'm not worried. But if we get 28 degrees or lower, I'm probably going to go cover this with a frost cloth. Um, and because uh, again, it comes in these long sheets. It's real simple. You can see how they've covered this bed right here, which is probably a four foot by uh, eight foot box, tied up the corners. You can put some rocks on it to keep from blowing away in the wind. It just makes it real easy. Um, and this is really the best choice because sheets of plastic or burlap or bed sheets uh, are poor choices for a wide variety of re reasons. They get wet, um, they, they stick to the plants when they get wet. Uh, the plastic can trap too much heat or too much moisture, which then freezes and causes even more trouble. Just by and large, they cause more problems uh, and more damage than they prevent. Uh, frost cloth, if you keep it clean and dry and store it in your garage, you can use it for years and years and years and years and years. It's well worth the money and the investment because I would hate for you to go through all the work to build a raised bed, fill it with good soil, fertilize it properly and have beautiful healthy plants and then temperature drops to 20 degrees one night and everything gets uh, gets killed by the cold. We don't want that. Now, pest and disease control. Uh, the best defense against bugs and disease is healthy plants. That begins with healthy soil, which if you do uh, start with good soil and uh, mend it properly, you're going to have that taken care of. But you can do everything right and you can have the best soil in the world and you'll still run into problems. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> gardening in Texas is not for the faint of heart. I talk to people who have moved here from all parts of the country every single day and they all tell me how easy it was to grow vegetables back in wherever they came from. I don't care if it's New York or uh, Minnesota or Mississippi or Northern California, you know, Everywhere is easier than here. It's our heavy black soil, it's our unpredictable weather, and we have every pest and plant disease uh, known to man seems to afflict our veggies here in North Texas. But uh, here are a few products you might wanna have at the ready. Uh, first on the list is BT, uh, which is a, a, a bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis. Uh, it can, controls destructive caterpillars in and around vegetable and flower gardens, and it has no effect, I repeat, it has zero harm on birds, earthworms, beneficial insects like honeybees or ladybugs. This really only targets caterpillars, and it is totally safe to use right up until the day of harvest. I'm showing two products here. The one from Bonide is a spray. That's a ready to use spray, uh, so it's obviously liquid. The uh, dipple dust or dipple dust, never really known exactly how to say that. Uh, I've always said dipple. Uh, that's a powder form and you just uh, take the cap off, squeeze the tube and it makes a just poof, a little cloud of dust and uh, that will help you get a nice coating on your vegetables. What happens is the caterpillar will ingest this and the little bugger, it basically shuts down his digestive system and so that critter that's been chewing up your plants will starve to death. Because what will happen, usually the day that you plant your cabbage and your kale or your Swiss chard or your spinach or your beautiful heirloom lettuce, you'll see this beautiful white butterfly show up in your garden. <laughs> uh, so many of the fall crops are leafy greens and they attract this cabbage white butterfly 
This will lay eggs on the underside of your cabbage, kale, lettuce, and seemingly everything else in your cool season garden. And then those eggs hatch and those tiny hungry caterpillars will begin devouring your vegetables. And these things are tiny. Uh, they're hard to see sometimes because they're about the width of the fingernail on your pinky. Small little guys. Uh, they're on the underside of the leaf usually so they can hide from predators. That's why when you spray with BT, either with the liquid or the, or the dust, you want to get the underside of the leaves if you can. Uh, if you don't go out and check on your garden daily, if you let three or four days go by, you will come out and just find your leafy greens riddled with holes, courtesy of this pretty white butterfly that will show up the day you plant them. <laughs> now, if you are losing vegetables, you've got holes all in them and you're not sure what's eating them, uh, I always recommend Captain Jack's. Uh, it's called Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. Uh, it can contains another... Um, a naturally occurring uh, bacteria called uh, spinosad, and it kills a wide range of critters that would do damage to your plants. You can see them there, borers, beetles, uh, gypsy moth, lopers, uh, spider mites, leaf miners, um, quite a few things. So if I'm not certain, if I can't see the bug itself, but I keep seeing the damage, then I'm gonna reach for Captain Jack's uh, I find that it works for me most of the time unless I just have a massively bad infestation. And if that's the case, you might hop online or come to Shades of Green and talk to a uh, professional and get some expert opinion. Uh, now, I get asked this all the time. There is no spray or, or dust or powder or potion that will keep the squirrels and rabbits out of your garden. For that, you're going to need to get a cage or a fence or a gun or a dog or something. Um, I've just never found anything that's as effective as just surrounding um, my uh, raised bed with uh, a metal cage. Uh, we have cats at the nursery and we keep them hungry and they seem to do a pretty good job <laughs> of keeping the rabbits at bay and the squirrels off our crops, but not always. It's really tough. Uh, DE, diatomaceous earth, is great for crawling insects. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I use this on my hostas and my, on my shady garden to keep the slugs away. Um, basically anything that crawls across this. On a microscopic level, uh, DE is uh, basically uh, a shard of glass. It's, the, it's, the, uh, it's a microscopically fossilized remains of a diatom. I'll let you look that up and do the research on it. But anything that crawls across it is going to dry out. It's going to damage the coating of their skin or their exoskeleton, and they're going to die. Uh, this really has no adverse impacts on people or pets whatsoever. In fact, it's often an ingredient in a lot of cattle feed. What you get at the nurseries and uh, good garden centers like Shades of Green is going to be feed grade, and that's important. You're going to be putting this on your plants. Um, and you could just sprinkle this around the base of the plant if you see you've got a lot of crawling things, peel, uh, pill bugs or some, you know, anything else that you don't think should be chewing on your plants, DE is a good way to go. Uh, when we get into funguses, not, I don't really have, uh, that's really not a big issue in the fall and winter because the humidity is lower, the air is drier. Uh, typically don't run into powdery mildew or rust or black spots during these cooler season uh, growing seasons. But you might, because Texas weather is massively unpredictable, and it could be 70 and cloudy and chilly one day, and then the next day it could be 95. Uh, we can have swings in temperature of 20 degrees uh, fairly often, so it's something you have to deal with. Copper fungicide would be my go-to for uh, what seems to be a mildew um, uh, kind of issue. Uh, also blight, which is really something that affects tomato plants mostly. Copper fungicide is a good choice. If you if it's really bad, then I might bump up to a product called Revitalize, which is also a biofungicide. It's very high potency, but uh, still safe to use on vegetables. A good product. Uh, but again, if you're ever not sure what's happening to your vegetables, take a picture, bring a sample, bring it into Shades of Green, let one of our our knowledgeable and experienced staff try to help diagnose the product. We have some incredibly talented people who know way more than I do that have been working in this industry for a long, long time. And we want to help you solve your problems because our whole goal is to, um, we want you to be a success at gardening in North Texas and this will allow that to happen. 
So that pretty much does it. Again, my name is Tim Wardell. This has been Cool Season Vegetables. Uh, this was a clinic that I taught live and in person at the Garden Center on Saturday, September 19th in the most socially distanced, mask-wearing way possible that we could um, under the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, I strongly encourage you to come by and see us sometime. Shades of Green Garden Center. We're on Coit Road in Frisco. You can also check us out online. We're also on um, social media, on Instagram and Facebook at Shades of Green TX. You can find us there. So that'll do it. Again, thank you so much. I'm Tim Wardell with Shades of Green Gardening Center.